Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Every now and then I come across a deal on eBay that really seems too good to be true. It's selling way too cheap for what it is. Like, as if the seller just doesn't know what they have. So I throw down a cheap bid on it, and no one else does. Then it shows up a few days later, and it turns out I actually didn't get scammed. This has happened a few times in the past, like with a Radeon engineering sample card and an old Casio Cassiopeia PDA that I got for suspiciously cheap. And today's suspiciously cheap thing that I've acquired is a box of SAS drives. I got 15 drives for $20. Luckily, they were not shipped like this. I just put them in this smaller box to take them to the studio uh, because the massive box they were packaged in was uh, really big and hard to carry. Now, these are, of course, 2.5 inch SAS drives. These are built for servers. They're built to be uh, as small as possible while being as fast as possible and uh, noise isn't a concern. So they have very small platters for high seek times, which means they're usually small, strange gigabyte size, and we'll see that in a bit. So let me just take these all out really quickly. Well, no, I've, I've sorted them a bit. So the lot had two different types of drives. It had this one right here, uh, from HP. Of course, HP is not the manufacturer, but this would have been from an HP server. As far as I, uh, as far as I know, all of these are working, but even if only three of these drives work, that would still be cheaper, this lot would still be cheaper than buying those three drives individually. Also, it had free shipping, so yeah, I got these for a pretty crazy price. Anyway, this HP drive, I think is uh, MK, okay, yeah, so Toshiba. I believe this is a Toshiba. They usually use blue controller boards and their part numbers usually start with MK. And this is, this is a drive design I've never seen before. Uh, of course, I haven't had that much exposure to 2.5 inch 15 millimeter SAS drives. I'm just starting to get into those because I don't have many servers that take them. But I do believe this is a Toshiba drive. As it says here, it is a 146 gigabyte, 15,000 RPM. 146 gigabyte may seem like an odd size, but it's normal for servers. So the first server drive was 9.1 gigabytes, like the first real server drives on the SCSI bus back in the 90s. Then there were 18.2, 36.4, 72.8 aka it was just sold as 73 and then the next was just sold as 146 but it was actually what would that be like 145.6 so these server grade drive sizes are pretty close to consumer grade sizes but they're always like 10 percent less so 9.1 versus 10 gigabyte, 18.2 versus 20 gigabyte, and uh, so on and so forth. This would be closest to 160 gigabytes, being, of course, 14 gigabytes off. But uh, I digress. The other drive is the same in specification. This is a Dell drive, or a drive for Dell servers, and I believe this is a Seagate Savio. These are quite common. Uh, oh yeah, it says right here, Savio 15K.3. So this is point three. That's a pretty old guy. Let me see if it has a date of manufacture anywhere on it. 12-2014. So yeah, it's about a decade old. Now these look very good condition, like no dust or anything. So uh, too bad SAS doesn't report smart data, so I cannot see any of the like usage data like flying hours that sort of thing so i have four of these dell drives and the rest of them are the hp toshiba ones so uh there's not much else i can say other than i'm gonna put one of each in my server 
and see, uh, we'll just see how they do. Now, I had been thinking, how am I going to test these drives? Because my caddy, my hot swap caddy, only accepts a 3.5 inch drive. But then I thought, the SATA port on a 2.5 inch drive is the same distance away from the edge as on a 3.5 inch drive. So if I can find a way to keep the drive exactly here and just fill this space in the caddy, that'll work. So I did some measurements, I did some math, and I 3D printed this little adapter that adds to the width and the length of a tiny 2.5 inch drive and makes it the exact size of a 3.5 inch drive. So it'll hold it in place in my caddy. Now this will block a lot of airflow, so I don't want to use it for more than like 15 minutes at a time because these drives get very, very hot. And uh, I don't just mean warm, I mean you can burn yourself if these are not properly cooled and you take one out because these uh, spin very fast and they're designed to be in servers with high airflow. But that aside, I'm going to pop this little guy into my caddy and uh, get on with the tests. So I finished running tests on the two little drives. Of course, here are the graphs for the Seagate ones, and I'll be comparing it to the Toshiba ones. And uh, those are called HP in the program because uh, that's just what they're named. Now I know it's a now I know it's really cluttered. I'm sorry about that, but there's really no better way to just display all of this information. So let me just start out by saying both of these drives are ridiculously freaking fast. Now the Toshiba is slightly faster, look at this, 195 IO per second. 195 from a hard drive, a single hard drive. For comparison, my RAID array of three 7200 RPM HGST Ultrastars only manages about 85. And uh, on the Seagate we see something pretty similar. But across the board, except for 64K, the, uh, the HP or Toshiba drive manages to pull ahead a little bit. With the uh, read test here on the Seagate, I don't really know what was going on there. Uh, it's not very even as it usually is. But uh, we can see the Toshiba actually managed to get over 200 megabyte per second sequentials, which is crazy, and was about 8 megabytes per second faster than the Seagate. Now the Seagate actually had barely faster access time. Uh, again, I don't know why our CPU usage is negative. And here are our cache tests, and the Toshiba actually has the fastest cache of any drive I've ever tested at a steady almost 200 megabytes per second, uh, which is crazy for hard drive cache. But I guess when your drive is that fast, your cache memory also needs to be that fast. Uh, the Seagate was a little slower, looks like we're only at about 175, as opposed to like 190-ish. But here are our other results. Now the Seagate actually has a far higher burst rate, and uh, it is it is lower in almost every other department though. So for my RAID array, I'm going to be using three of these Toshiba drives, and uh, that will be that. So that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, pretty crazy to see drives this fast, but that's where we're going to wrap it up. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.